Um, everybody, I want to introduce you to Scott Merrill. If you sketch with us, you all know Scott. He is there with us sketching all the time. And he does some wonderful watercolors. He has this specific palette that is so juicy and bright. It's really wonderful to look at. And his um, his drawing and his compositions are always so nice. So we asked him to talk with us today. He's um, a graphic artist and he works for a, I'm gonna say it wrong, a surveying company. Uh, it's part of it, yeah. It's it's actually a, a civil engineering, land painting, landscape architect survey. We do, a whole, the only thing we don't do that I know of is architecture, which would be cool if we did, but we don't. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so it kind of covers all those. And uh, I, uh, I'm the graphic artist for the company and I pretty much take what people give me and then the engineers will design things in black and white. My job is to make it really pretty in color so that, but it's always digital pretty much. And uh, so that way they can kind of sell that and, or show it to clients and everybody will like look at it and get a pretty good idea what the property is going to look like or the project is going to look like. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Sometimes I do need what are called elevations, which is what you're looking at the side of it. But uh, one fortunate aspect I've had recently is that they've invited me to, they, it's funny, I've been here for 14 years and it was just in the last <laughs> year. Like, oh, you do watercolor. <laughs> I was like, yeah. And so uh, so now we're, we've kind of incorporated that also into our palette of things that we offer um, here. I can kind of show you. So, you know, I have like a wall and I just kind of put things up on there. There's some paintings I've done. And so, you know, it's a lot of fun and it, it's pretty, it's not, I don't do that all the time. It's just kind of occasionally and which kind of leads to the conversation for tonight in that uh, sometimes when we're coming up with concepts and stuff, I'll get invited into the meeting and, you know, I'll just to do a rough sketch and then occasionally we'll kind of draft it up as a watercolor just to kind of communicate an idea like it's it's real temporary it's real fast it's not intended to be like something that we're going to show it's kind of like what we do in urban sketching where we go and we sketch for 30 minutes or a little bit longer and you know you come up with a, a sketch to convey an idea a story and so that's always kind of my objective and it's a lot of fun um so i don't want to eat up too much time chatting but i do would like to if you don't mind i'd like to kind of flip through so you get an idea of, of my history with with sketching and sketchbooks. I've been drawing since I was a little kid, but never really carried a sketchbook until I was really in college. And and even then it wasn't one that I'd go urban sketching in. I would just kind of sketch it out on the couch and stuff. But then a buddy of mine uh, I went to school with, Will, he's for Disney now. He's amazing. And he's started doing urban sketching down in Orlando. And so we chat a lot about that. He kind of pulled me out of my shell. I was like, hey, man, let's go sketching at the zoo. And so I started really doing that. And then I graduated, started working full time, and suddenly I didn't sketch anymore. And then about 12 years ago, I was like, you know, I'm going to get back into this. <laughs> and so, so I started sketching, like, for the last, and I'd go on by myself different places. And then, um, and it wasn't until like last year or, or a year and a half ago that I kind of, heard of, of the urban sketching group now I have a bunch of friends to sketch with so it's amazing but so here's one of my sketchbooks this is at Fort Clinch I like to kind of document where you know where it's at and the date sometimes I'll even put the weather but I pretty much just kind of sat in there you know by myself in a chair and would just sketch and here's another one where I sat up on the hilltop and kind of looked down uh there were no reenactors but I just kind of drew them in there but I even put the weather, you know, 73 degrees if it was sunny and I put a, a little brief description. So it's a lot of fun because it helps me to remember where I've been. It's you can remember so much more when you draw or sketch than if you took a photograph. And um, this is when I was at Marine Land and these were these rocks that kind of went out to the water and on the casino rocks and then on them they had all these great little barnacles. So I kind of described what I was looking at and I put it kind of in a neat composition. Fort San Marcos. I just kind of sat out there and just kind of painted it. And uh, like Lisa said, the colors are pretty strong and kind of vivid. And, um, you know, I've been kind of really changing my color palette over time. But this is when I went to the Capitol with my son, just kind of sat in there and 
painted. Uh, it's my wife and my son. Here's the Lincoln Memorial. So I really, really do love to go out and sketch. This is at the Guana River Environmental Center. It's actually pretty cool. They have these stuffed whales and sharks and stuff and rays. They hang from the ceiling. It's indoors, which is great because it's like a, it used to be a buck to get in. Now it's free. And I would just go in there and they have tons of stuff to sketch from. Um, this is down in uh, the Fountain Youth. And I just really, this is before I started knowing anybody in the urban sketching group. So I was always by myself in um, St. Augustine. This is in the mountains. And so if you, you can see that I don't use a lot of heavy ink, um, I do a little bit here and there. And if anything, I just kind of use it for accent. Um, you know, sometimes I'll sketch in in pencil, but you can get gray ink, which is cool because it looks like pencil, but it's, you're still committing to that final, that one line that goes down, no erasing. So it's kind of fun. This is, this is not urban sketching. This is me just looking at a watch that I had. Um, this is down at Guana, one of the parking there. This was at the Guana place. They had like a, a this, they were feeding little alligators. I kind of had fun with the composition, had them popping out, which I thought would be kind of interesting. And um, that's recently. So one other thing I wanted to share before we start sketching is I actually carry three sketchbooks. Um, I have one that is like, when we when we go do urban sketching, this is my preliminary. When we do like 10 minute sketches or five minute sketches, I like, and you can see how sketchy it is. This is me trying to figure out a composition. This is just nothing but people. And I carry this with me in the car too, or in my backpack. And if I'm waiting in line to eat food, you know, or if I'm sitting at a table or waiting for an order, I'll look out and just start doodling until we get our food. You know, if it's a bird that lands on a roof, I look out the window, he's cool, like 10 seconds. But you know what? All that little sketching that you do, it, it adds up in your confidence. It adds up in your, you know, your, your, your technique and your skill. So just keep sketching all the time. I mean, that's, you know, even if, if it's rough, it doesn't matter. This is your sketchbook and it's for you to really enjoy, you know, the, the just sketching. And, and sometimes I'll go out early and just kind of sketch, but this is intended to be like, this is from one of our classes. This is intended to be my rough sketch with my fast one. And then the, this one is, no, wait, this is the other one, and I'm gonna, we'll start drawing any second. This is kind of like the in-between one. It's this one's huge. Um, Chris had mentioned before about, you know, uh, trying to go down on size. <laughs> so, um, but this is like, a, this is kind of like the in-between. This is where I spend a little bit more effort and time in it. And the sketchbook that I just showed you in the beginning, this is when I'm comfortable and I just start, you know, I have time. I've got a little, you know, I'll just really enjoy spending time on it. So it's a lot of fun. But what I want to start with tonight is um, talking about composition. And But what we're going to do is we have three types of projects that we're going to work on. Lamps, barrels, and uh, palm trees, and or whatever trees that I think they were all palms. And so we're going to start with 10-minute sketches of those because I don't want to run out of time. Um, so what I thought we would do is go ahead and if, does everybody have printouts on their screen or in, in their possession that uh, we sent out? Hopefully you do. Uh, so I thought what we would do is start by picking, picking any one of the images um, in the lamps. And there's one, two, three, four lamps, I believe. No, 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 five, six, seven, eight, nine. So pick one or two, however many you want to do. Just start sketching a lamp and enjoy it. And we'll time it. We'll do it for 10 minutes. We'll look at some stuff. If you, if, you, if you sketch it, then sketch another one. If you have, I find you can probably do two in 10 minutes. So, um, but just go ahead and we'll enjoy this time of sketching this lamp. We'll look at them and then we'll move on to the next one. So, I actually don't have a timer, but I'll look right here. It's seven, we'll say it's 7.50. So at eight o'clock, we'll stop. So please begin. <laughs> Work. 
can I find the uh, reference pictures? They would have been emailed to you? Yeah, I'm not on the email list yet, I don't think. Yeah, you can um, find them on Facebook or in, uh, did you print them in Instagram, Hannah? No, they're not on Instagram, but I can put it right now. They're on the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, I mentioned <clears throat> about drawing in pencil. There, there's nothing wrong with drawing in pencil, you know, really at all when you're sketching. Um, I just find when I'm doing quick sketches that it's kind of a confidence builder, which is ironic in a way because when you first start drawing in ink, it, it just seems like you want to race and can't see all of these extra lines. What I found over time is it ended up forcing me to be more committed with my line work. So that when I drew a line, I was like, okay, I really thought about the line I was drawing, and it's great. And but when I do my actual watercolor paintings, um, I'll actually use pencil, you know, and and really uh, start with that, and then kind of lay all of that out because by then, you know, in even in pencil, my, my commitment to the line, you know, will be. Um, let's see right there will be definitely more uh, committed, I guess, because of all the practice that I've gotten drawing the pen. So you can see right here, I made a mistake, but that's fine. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna scribble it out. I'm just gonna live with it. And then, you know, just think about that experience. In fact, I might try and incorporate part of that line over here. So, um, but that's okay if you make them there's there's no erasing so you just kind of say okay it's it's just a sketch and if you know i'm not worried about making a mistake i'm not really enjoying the process <laughs> you know so Sorry. Okay, so it's 7.53, so we still have seven minutes left. All the images are now on Instagram. If, if someone is not on Facebook, they can find it there. Okay. So sometimes I like to kind of mix the colors actually on the paper if it's, you know, if I'm doing wet, a wet, not, not really a dry, a dry brush, but if it's, you know, got some wetness to it. If, you know, I notice there's some green in there. If I make it too green and what I'll do is use a complementary color, the opposite of that color. And then if I want to gray it out a little bit, instead of adding like gray or anything, then, you know, I'll just use the opposite color on the color wheel and it kind of tones that down, but you still get left with that um, underlying highlight of, of green.
And one thing I like to do a lot is if I notice I've got a lot of color coming, a lot of water, just big old puddle, because when you're drawing on site, um, if you're, if everything's wet, your color tends to bleed into each other. So you can actually um, put your paintbrush, the base of it, right on the edge, right like that. And it will suck a lot of moisture out, which is pretty, pretty, <laughs> you, you know, you don't worry about it. Uh, it's not like you're in a swimming pool full of paint and everything mixing, and then you end up having colors. One uh, thing I like to do sometimes, especially at home, if I'm waiting for something, I do have a blow dryer, um, like kind of a craft one, which is pretty nice, but um, that sometimes will kind of bend the paper. But um, one thing I like to do is I'll do two at a time. So I'll start one in ink and then add a wash and then I'll start another one. And while that one is drying, I'm working on another one, you know, and that's always pretty fun to do. Uh, another thought I had was a lot of times, you know, if, if we take pictures, a lot of times when you go places, if you're like, oh, I want to, you don't have time to sketch it. So you take a picture because you're like, oh, I mean, I think I have like 10,000 pictures on my phone. But what I'll do is um, take a picture. And a lot of times we look at that and we're like, I don't really like that composition. And um, you, you want to see it another way. You can always flip your picture <laughs> on the phone then suddenly you like that, that view better. And, and so that's something that you can definitely do. Sure, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I think we still have a few minutes left. Um, I'm going to turn around and look at the clock. But, uh, one problem I have is that I don't, I mentioned it earlier, is I don't always wait for the uh, for the time to, for everything to dry. So it, everything's a learning process still, you know, there's a lot I do, I go, oh, I could have done that better. And, and I think that's the whole part of urban sketching is that, you know, be okay with it. It's, it's a learning experience. And, but mainly you just really want to have a good time. And if you get wrapped up in, you know, in mistakes that you feel like, oh, it didn't look as good or I don't want to show it, you know, or anything like that, um, then you're not really enjoying the full value of, of time sketching. So, you know, learn to really just enjoy the process. And if you don't like the painting, there's lots of more white paper, <laughs> you know, there's always more paper, you know, and uh, I can tell you this much, you know, I have a website, I mentioned it to Lisa. I was like, you know, for every one decent piece that you see on my website, there's probably 50. <laughs> <laughs> ones that never didn't make the cut, you know, and that's okay. <laughs> so let's see what time it is. It is eight o'clock. So, okay. 
So now let's go ahead and uh, that was five, uh, 10 minutes. So if, if you know, uh, we let's just share and see what we think and go ahead and hold them up, <laughs> you know, but this is mine. It's just kind of quick and, you know, it's, it's pretty washy. It's still actually pretty wet. You can see where some of my ink started to bleed and uh, that kind of really kind of have a really cool effect sometimes when that ink does bleed like that. So, uh, you know, uh, so everybody feel, feel free to there and let's see them. <laughs> Oh, I love that. That's nice. I love all the dark areas in there. You know, that that's really cool. I like how you can see the yellow and inside the actual actual lantern part of itself too. Oh, I love that. Is anybody else to share? So was that were you speaking to Glenn on that one? I think so. Yeah. Oh, that looks that. Yeah. This one? Okay. That's cool. I'm a watercolor at first, and I'm just now thinking about urban sketching. So I'm kind of the opposite of what you've been doing. No, I think that's great. That's awesome. I know it's so. tricky sometimes to paint and draw real fast, but you know, again, if you capture the spirit of things, I love that a lot. Yeah. I love how you can see the glowing part of the lantern. I don't know if that was intentional or not. Yeah, that was intentional. Yeah, that's really cool how it kind of bleeds into the back of the post. That's awesome. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Are you based in Jacksonville? Yes. yes. Okay. So I'm actually in Palm Coast. I'm down the way uh, below St. Augustine a little bit. So I recognize Marine Land and a lot of the spots oh, that you had. Yeah. yeah. Washington Oak State Park is a fantastic place to oh, go. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I'm a yeah. cyclist. I ride through there all the time. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Does anybody else have anything they want to share? Did you see my pastel? Oh, here we go. No, I didn't see that. That's awesome. Cool. That's fantastic. Oh, I love it. Can you see it? Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so nice. It's good. A little bit there. Beautiful, Lisa. I love the green on top. That looks great. There was a lot of green in that one. I like the green. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of, I do too. It kind of gives it like a maritime feel. Like it's, it's patinaed out, you know, on the coast or something like that. It starts to tell a story. You know, it's been there a while. Either that or Disney did it. <laughs> so one or the other. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Um, on my screen, I just see like one person at a time. I don't see a Brady Bunch effect. So um, I'm, I don't know if other folks are holding up things or not, but uh, if you're welcome. Okay. Okay. Say that again. Gallery, gallery view, you can change oh. the gallery. And then you can see everybody at one time. Oh, wow. Now I see everybody. Hi, That's it's good. a pretty good <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, I love that one. That one looks like Louisa, is that right? Carver, yes. that's beautiful. Yes. Oh, thank my, you. Yeah, my apologies on my technical. Oh, that's all right. Lack of prowess there. So, um, okay, well, I saw a few. <laughs> so, definitely. Do we want to move on to the next one then? So it's eight o'clock. So I figured we got 10 minutes, so eight, 10, and then we'll spend about five minutes um, looking at the next one. Okay, so the next one's going to be barrels. And. So again, if, if for folks who held something up, if I, if I didn't comment, it certainly wasn't intentional. I just saw one, whoever was speaking, holding theirs up is the one that I saw. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right, so here we have a collection of barrels. Um, you know, feel free to just have fun. Let me look at the clock. It's 8.04, so about, we'll say 8.15, we'll, we'll come to a stopping point. I'm uh, very new to Zoom. At work, we use Teams for everything. And uh, so 
So, so uh, in fact, I think Zoom, uh, only with the Urban Sketchers have I ever used Zoom. So there's a lot I don't really know about it <laughs> on how it works, especially when I'm usually the one sketching. I'm, I'm not kind of the one leading a, uh, an effort of class or anything like that. You know, I work on the computer a lot and I have a tablet that I can draw on. And I tell you, honestly, nothing beats the feel or the sound of pen or, or pencil or anything on paper. You just have that connection. I mean, there's some amazing digital artwork out there. That's pretty impressive. And honestly, nothing compared to the human connection <laughs> to uh you know working uh working on paper it just is just nice <laughs> you know feels good You know, what's interesting is um, I kind of float around on my palette because I'm never I'm always trying to find like, you know, what colors work. And um, there's a gentleman, uh, Jim Richards, who does urban sketching. And uh, so I uh, kind of really started studying his stuff, I don't know, like about a year ago and was sort of curious about it. And, he has a pretty good color palette, you know, and so I borrowed some of his colors, you know, I was like, oh, I like that, you know, I think, and so, you know, some of the stuff really had a neat effect, but um, this, uh, I can't yellow, it is, I'm trying to think of the name of this yellow, it's, it's yellow here, but I will find, I can't remember the name of that yellow, but he uses a lot, and um, I know that doesn't help you, but I will find out the name of that color in a minute, and uh, it really has a nice, bright impact. The, the Hanson? Is it the Hanson? I think it's Hanson Yellow. Yeah, I, I, that's what I mentioned. And I, that's what comes to memory. I can't ever remember. I have a little color chart for my watercolor kit. This is my watercolor kit. Um, I've had this thing for, I don't know, for, for like, I don't know, 22 years. And um, it comes with a little top right here. And it has a notch in the back, so it actually connects. So you can take it with you and this is a bladder you undo it put the water in there it's great because it comes with colors that i didn't really like the colors it came with at all and um they were okay i used them and and i got this when i was in, in college i believe or right after college and so then i was like you know i'm gonna just take and replace the colors <laughs> and so i did and um 
and I've been using it since. I also have the metal one, the metal little one that every, you know, you see a lot of people carry that metal watercolor. And in order for that to stay on my board, because I'm not a very tall person, and so I don't want to fly down. So what I do a lot of times is um, I'll glue magnets to the actual board itself, and the magnets will hold that metal one down, which is pretty pretty convenient and helpful. I should check on the time. Last project we're going to have 10 30 minutes on. So we have about four more minutes left. Another um, a good habit that I, I try to get into because uh, when you're sketching outside, it can be really difficult sometimes um, to draw, for me at least, draw a vertical line. <laughs> it, it comes out this way or that way. It's okay if it's squiggly, but when, you know, when you're building, it kind of looks like a trapezoid. You're like, yeah. So what I find is good practice is to practice at home i'll get like just like a, a junky sketchbook like the two dollar kind the big spiral kind and i'll just hold it in my lap when i'm watching tv and just practice doing vertical lines and horizontal lines because then you know you you can put dots on the page too and connect the dots like just putting your pen down and just trying to connect it to another dot on the other page and a lot of illustrators do that for practice and it really does help with your eye-hand coordination, especially that practice where you put different and even amount of dots, just kind of connect them. But I would do it on junky paper, like uh, nothing nice, because all that's for is practice, just to eye-hand coordination and um, especially the vertical lines. Because uh, as I mentioned, sometimes my lines, they, they just kind of, they look weird. It ends up looking cartoony a little bit. So let me see, it is, we have two more minutes. You know, <clears throat> I hope it's okay I'm talking while I'm doing this. <laughs> I don't know if it's disturbing everybody or not, but I just thought it, it's a good time for me to share since I have your captive attention. So if I'm getting on, on folks' nerves by talking so much, just let me know. But it's just tips and stuff. But one thing, um, one thing that I, when I was a kid, that I always loved doing were dioramas. And uh, we didn't have a whole lot growing up, so I would use old shoe boxes. And um, whenever we had to do a book report, I always asked, can I do a diorama? And um, I would kind of draw in like 20,000 things on the sea and I draw in everything and put little strings with fake fish cutouts. But my point being is that when you're sketching, it's kind of fun to think in terms of you're taking somebody on a journey. You're telling somebody a story of where, where you were and how they can also, the viewer can now take that journey with you and experience, it's, it's so much better than just taking a picture. Because you take a picture and like I said, I have like 10,000 pictures, no one looks at them, you know? <laughs> when you have a sketchbook, you remember that day, you remember the weather, you remember if you were sweating, you remember the color. 
and everything so much more. All right, so it is 8.15. Okay, so now let's all share, now that I can go to Brady Bunch mode, I'm so excited, and I can see everybody's work. All right, so excited. Oh, I don't know who iPad 2 is, but I love it, bottom right-hand corner. That's awesome. Yay. I love it. You drew in the... Uh, oh, Joanna, that's really nice. I love how you have highlights on the right-hand side of the barrel where you left the paper. That's great. Oh, Gina, I love it. All the blue. And look at all your barrels. Holy cow. That's great. I love the vivid, Debbie. That's that's awesome. Chris, that's beautiful. Wow. I love that. Again, I love the highlights. I I, I want to know, how do you keep your color from, blend, from bleeding into each other? What's your trick? You breathe on it and dry it out? How do you do that? Uh, you see, it's still it's still dripping. So that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's still active. <laughs> I I love it. I, I love the darkness on the left. That's that that's wonderful. That's wow. Cool. Yeah. That's great. Anybody else? Okay, Lisa, let's see. Can you hold it closer? I can't. It's so small. My iPad. Oh, I love it. That looks fantastic. Or right, is that toned paper? That's awesome. It, well, it's yeah, it's pastel paper, so yeah. Right. I love your your dark above your three barrels. That's nice. That's a nice way to help pop those barrels out at the bottom. Thank That's you. beautiful. Yeah. Well, everybody's doing great. I love it. Okay. So next is going, I'm going to turn the page. Well, I guess I could draw on this side. Mine's still dripping. Mine's running. Like, yeah. <laughs> crazy. It's probably going to run over here. So, um, all right. So now let's talk about Palm trees. I love palm trees. Now, I was going to also share with you, there's another picture set of grasses and stuff. Um, we're going to we're going to look at those for our final project, um, which is the culmination of all these things, which is really going to be a lot of fun. But um, so here's some palm trees. We're going to do 15 minutes. Or, I'm sorry, 10 minutes. It's 8, 17, 15, 16, 17. So we'll just give it an extra three. So we'll say at 8... Uh, now eight. We'll say eight twenty. We'll say eight thirty, because that's yeah, twenty ten minutes. Yeah, so you get an extra two minutes. We'll say eight thirty. <laughs> you know, one thing you can do with your pen. Like, um, speaking of pens, uh, Chris actually recommended this one. It's, it's massive. It's heavy. You can knock somebody out with it. Oh, it's oh, really yeah. awesome. But you Chris can do it. Yeah. So it's really heavy. Yeah, it's a gas guzzler. <laughs> now, this one is a, 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 a Lamy pen. Lamy, Lamy. And um, I had to order an extra fine tip because I like turning the pen over to this side because you get like a really fine well that's not fine a really really fine versus a really heavier you can see those two I have paper here I don't want to draw on my hand so um well, what I like to do sometimes is just kind of start with like with this with a palm or something I just kind of start with a shape and then you know just kind of break that down be loose fun with it you know there's my looks like a giant lollipop or something coming out of the ground there's a man named mike lynn uh who is an architectural illustrator i think he was a landscape architect too and um the guy is great um he's been around for a while but his big thing is, is his website i think is called be loose and um it's such a great especially for urban sketching and just for sketching in general. It's just the sense of freedom because, you know, I, I love to paint acrylic too. And, um, you know, I love to really put a lot of PLC into it and time and, and effort. But when you're loose, there's so much freedom to that. You know, so much, it's so expressive. And I think it's almost cathartic. <laughs> it's like a therapy, it's art therapy. So, uh, yeah. <sighs> Mm 
And it must be amazing to go sketch out west where it's so dry. <laughs> your painting dry fast. <laughs> Oh, I, I heard a uh, kind of a nerdy, funny artist joke. Um, it actually applies to, to designers specifically, but how many designers does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> the, the answer is, does it have to be a light bulb? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> which is pretty much the response whenever I do any kind of concept stuff or anything for work. And they're like, does it have to be that? And I'm like, no, it doesn't have to be. I used to, when I first got out of school, I used to kind of, you know, your, your skin's not so leather fied yet. And so I mean, I used to be like, what? I go home, tell my wife, oh man, I hated my work. I really wanted to change it. And later on, I figured they didn't hate the work. It's just part of the process is, is change. And so, uh, so embrace change. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's all for the better anyway, so. Well, not necessarily always for the better, but hopefully, at least when it comes to design, that's the goal. <laughs> Do, um, do any of y'all ever do thumbnails uh, just to kind of, before you sketch a scene, just to kind of see like a small, tiny sketch, just to kind of get an idea of what it would be like? Talk about that. What's that? Talk to us about thumbnails. We need to hear about them. Say that again? We need to hear about thumbnails. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's we're actually going to talk about that in depth a little bit, right? When actually it's after this project, and um, I'm going to go over that. Um, thumbnails are essential um, to do, and they're literally the size. They come; they're not that big, but they're you know about this big. And you break things down in the simplest, simplest way to get an idea for contrast, for layout. For composition, which is layout, um, you know, and uh, it's really, to me, it's a fundamental skill. And that's one thing about, you know, I'll meet young designers, graphic designers, and they tend to design on the computer. And, and I'm like, that's a terrible idea. And, you know, I said, you should sketch it out. And you'd be amazed how many designers don't know how to draw. <laughs> and I'm like, look, it's a great skill. It's fun to do. Just sketch. And they're like, but I can design. I said, the problem with designing on the computer is once you get anything, your first one that you do, you're going to be committed to that because it looks like it's done in a way. And so you're not working out the problems. You're, you started it, you started it, and then suddenly you feel like, yeah, this is it. 
when you should work out the problems and, you know, doing thumbnail sketches are great because you can really work out so many things when then you'll find that there's a better solution to your problem. I mean, and essentially when drawing, you know, you're, you're kind of solving problems in a way, you know, you're, you're solving the problem of how do I recreate this, you know? Uh, so we'll go into definite more detail and I have some examples I can show you and stuff. Let me see what time it is. It is 826. My goodness. It's like we've been drawing forever. So we have four more minutes. So we get done at nine. So we'll have basically 30 minutes to kind of, I'll talk for five and then we'll have 20, we'll do, we'll draw for 20. Uh, so you, where we're going to combine some of these elements, 20, 25 minutes, and then we'll wrap up and give five minutes to kind of look over everything right at uh, five minutes to nine. And then, uh, and then we'll tie it all up. So let me, nine o'clock. 826. How about we come to a stopping point in one minute? I know I'm cutting it short. I wanted to talk about layouts. So we have one minute warning. <laughs> it's all good. It's just sketching. <laughs> it's not going in a gallery. <laughs> I I love it. You know, I mean there was times where I'll be outside when we go and I'll be frustrated and you know I'll make a wrong color choice. And then I have to remind myself. This isn't a fine art class. <laughs> this I should be enjoying this, you know, and, and not getting frustrated. And so you just you just say okay, and you learn from it, and then you look at everybody else's, and you learn from theirs too. And um, it sure is a, it sure is a fun process. You know, Scott, if you ever did pastel, you might be very, very frustrated because you don't you only get the colors you get. You can't oh. mix colors. You, you can can't. overlay colors and you can get some other colors, but uh -huh. you basically have to say, okay, I'm not going to be in that family of greens. Oh, you know what I mean, yeah, I'm not going to be in that family of greens, so I'm going to do it in this one. And yeah. nobody really knows that you didn't get the right family of greens as long as you get your values right. That's right. And what's interesting is there's a, a guy named Kevin Arthur. And um, when I was with the art league, we would, he would have these drawing things and, and we'd go on Saturday sketch and he does pastels. The guy's a genius. And I'm sure most of y'all, some of y'all know him. Yeah. And he would do not local color, not the colors that you would think it should be like whatever is brown is brown. He would pick like these arbitrary colors, but he would do it in a way that it still worked. So if you had this person who's like blue and green, it was beautiful it's because he understood. <laughs> you know. So I think a stopping point. If everybody would like to share. That would be really fun. Go to the Brady Bunch mode. Yay, it's the Brady Bunch. Nice. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, my goodness. All of them are so great. Style, so I ended up doing uh, pen and ink. Oh, I'm nice. So yeah. <laughs> Those are great. Oh, I love it. Though. Very you know, nice, Louise. Yeah. yeah. I, that stuff wasn't working. <laughs> I think it works. I, I love oh, how the blue absolutely was. Out. Yeah. That's great, Chris. That's beautiful. I love the dark underneath the canopy, too. Those are, oh, those are really nice. I love your pop. Pink. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. Everybody's just, oh, I love it so much. It's so Gina, that was beautiful. I love yours so much. This it's 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 pretty small on my screen. I can, I can make it out. Wow. Oh, <laughs> oh, that, wow. that is so nice. Pretty. Wow. Beautiful. Very, very nice. Very pretty. It really is. Wow. That's wonderful. Oh, Joanna, those are great too. Let's see. I love that. That is beautiful. I love again. Oh, I can really see. Oh, the yeah, pops of pink and stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love the fronds too. I like how you did that detail. You got like the scribble of the fronds. That's wonderful. All right, thanks for sharing. Um, so.
what I wanted to talk to y'all a little bit about, we have 30 minutes left roughly, is that um, a lot of times when we go out <clears throat> and we sketch, now I know the, the basic rule, one of the basic rules of urban sketching is you sketch what you see, and that's true, and that's great. Um, sometimes you can omit things, but you don't really want to add a flying dragon in the background unless you're at Universal Studios or something. So um, the thinking I'm having is that when it comes to composition and stuff, it's it's if you get some ideas of when you're laying things out of how things would make a nice composition when you're when you're creating your own, that will then teach you the more you do that the more you'll realize when you're outside and you're looking, you'll start looking for specific, you'll look at a, a, a scene and you'll start zeroing in on what you think would make a nice composition. You can't move the elements around, you, you know, but you, a lot of times I'll do this. You feel like you're some kind of director or film mogul from the 20, but I'll do this a lot and, and I'll kind of mm -hmm. like kind of throw in and I'll find something and um, and kind of start breaking things down. And I think, oh, because there's it's great to draw the whole scene, but sometimes you can draw individual elements, you know, kind of like what we did tonight. You draw the lamp, you can draw part of the lamp. You can get the lamp where suddenly you have the lamp and then you have part of the building behind it with people walking down, you have that movement. So it gets overwhelming, especially for new to urban sketching, I think, when you look out and you see like all the stuff to draw and you're like oh and you only have like a 60 degree cone of vision <laughs> anyways you know you're picking a peripheral and you're like what do i want to include in and things like that so learning composition and doing thumbnails are great i was going to share with you um this little piece this is just an example of a thumbnail sketch now again i realized that in urban sketching you know we're not creating this fantasy world we're drawing the real world but for work purposes, you know, I have it where, well, sorry, I'm here. So I met with a client and this was a while back and he was like, I just want to kind of show what this, um, I'll do it right here. This is basically a thumbnail sketch. And he was like, I just want to show like this scene of somebody walking down a path with some little buildings behind it, like houses and stuff. And I want to convey that comfortable, cozy feel, this nook kind of gardeny, you're walking through this, and it's a story, it suddenly becomes a story. And you're excited, you're like, yeah, let's tell the story. So while he's telling me that, he goes, but I need to go to a company because they do 3D renderings, and it just takes so long, and I really just need some way of conveying that. So as he's talking, I literally, this was probably 30 seconds, I just drew some houses, and kind of drew the houses in there, drew some lines from the road, kind of this, grabbed two markers, three markers, a light green, a dark green, and just made the sky, and he was told, that's cool. I like that. Okay, can you do that? I was like, sure. And he was like, how long is that going to take you? Like, like you know, do you, uh -oh. three weeks. And I'm like, three weeks? Yeah, what are you talking about? We do stuff in like five minutes. on urban sketch. So anyway, so then I ended up drawing this and painting it pretty quick. I mean, it's no master, but it, it conveyed what he was looking for based off of a thumbnail. And so he was real happy with it. But what I wanted to kind of go over with you right now is talking about thumbnails. So, okay. So when you're drawing a, a, any kind of thumbnail, like in, I'm just gonna show you a couple quick examples. So if you're wondering, how does this apply to what we're gonna do tonight? Because what we're gonna do tonight is take the palm tree, a barrel or many barrels, as many palm trees that you want, or, you know, and then the um, the lamp, and we're going to make a composition, a real quick one, and then, then you can sketch it out. So when you're doing it, you basically just kind of, and you know what, I'm using this fancy pen, let me use a, kind of a flare pen, and um, they're great. So I don't want to waste my ink, <laughs> my good ink. And so you start with, you know, this kind of scene. And then you can pick like, is it square? Is it rectangular or anything like that? In this case, it's literally as simple as drawing for the palm tree. I think, okay, well, this is a palm tree. I mean, you're not drawing like this ornate, beautiful thing. You're just kind of drawing this shape out and then you have your ground plane 
And then these little ideas for barrels, you know, and then there's like a lamp post that kind of comes out. Now, the, the problem is, is when you're when you're doing this, you want to do as many as you can to kind of work out what you think would make a nice scene. But how do you know what would make a nice scene? So then, you know, there's a couple of ways of composition. I'm sure mo a lot of you have heard of the rule of thirds, you know, where you basically have this grid, which you can actually turn on your cell phone if you have an Apple phone. I don't know about Android, but you can actually include this grid on your viewer or on your phone. And I have it on permanently. And what I'll do is you, you align certain things based on the intersection of where this lines up and it will make like a nice, pleasant visual. So for instance, if we were doing palms on here, you know, if you're applying the rule of thirds, maybe there's a tree right here. And then over here, I've got like a couple barrels. And then I have like a walkway right there, which, which gives it a sense of movement. Now I know it's getting kind of messy there. So to kind of make it simpler without the rule of thirds down there, we have a palm tree, we have some barrels, and then, you know, maybe there's, you know, or we can put a light like over here, you know? And so now you've got, this kind of neat composition and you can put some movement in there. That's one of the elements of design is movement. So now you kind of have this neat kind of layout happen. Another thing you can do is visual weight, which you don't really probably want to do is if you have a tree here and then draw another tree here and that's it. And then maybe you put something here that's what you're looking at the boulevard, but you've got this, what's happening is, is it's, it's like evenly on both sides. So what would be more, more interesting is to do it where your visual wave, so maybe you have some palms, you can draw a couple palm trees here. You've got your ground plane. And you don't want to put your ground plane in the middle. You either want your ground plane high or you kind of want it low, <laughs> in my opinion. So, but if it's in the middle, it gets kind of like a little boring. So um, and then maybe over here, you've got like, you know, you can put your barrels in or right here. <laughs> but then over here, you've got like your lamp post or something. And then maybe you could put some people right here. They're kind of walking across. So there's there's different ways to do it. Another way to do a good composition is if you've got your your dark colors in here, your mass, then you have contrast of clouds or something or sky behind there. So now you have this neat kind of shape contrast. So it makes it more interesting if you've got like something here and you got you know the opposite happening in the background. So when you're doing thumbnails for this, and I'm gonna quit talking, so I don't wanna burn through my time. So I'm gonna do like, I'm gonna do five quick ones, just to kind of, and, and y'all do as many as you want. So in, in this composition, I'm thinking, all right, guys, so if I have some palms here, here's my ground plane, let's do you know, another palm, that would be cool, that's fun. And I'm trying to imagine if I was there. So let's take some barrels, but let's, let's stack them and do three high, and then we'll do them on the side. Suddenly, I feel like I'm on the scene of Pirates of the Caribbean. That's cool. And then, you know, I've got like maybe a walk right here, which then gives the sense of movement. And we have some clouds. So that's a nice thumbnail. So let's do another one. <laughs> so it's like that quick, you know, and uh, maybe I want to do a palm here, a real tall palm. And then what I want to do is maybe a single barrel right there. And then we'll have like a single light, but this time it's got like a yard arm kind of thing, like it's kind of going out and that's my light. So now I can imagine this as being like you're walking down this path or something and maybe there's a sign on here. So that's kind of fun. So you just keep drawing different scenarios and you don't have to draw all three elements. You could draw all your, your light kind of down with this great palm tree behind it, you know, or you can draw your light with, you know, some barrels, maybe one's on its side. That's pretty cool. So now you have one on its side. So you have different combinations. So it's fun to do thumbnails. We're doing them kind of quick right now because we're ready to start drawing. But um, I encourage you to just think what would make, pick one thumbnail, do it real quick, and then just start drawing. So I think it's our time. We have 20 minutes. We have 20 minutes. So you got five minutes per item if you want to do that. And you don't have have to go ahead and start you don't have to um draw all palm trees i mean a palm tree a lamp and a barrel you can do all palm trees if you want to but it would make it more interesting in a composition <coughs> to kind of break it up a little bit and this this will help when you're out and about you'll start learning to look for interesting compositions to draw and paint
Is anybody stuck or is everybody kind of really on the Scott, Scott. Yes. Uh, do you want to, I'm confused. Are we supposed to draw thumbnails or do you want us to, to draw the thumbnails first oh, no. and then do yes. sketches? Just, I mean, it's, if you've already got something in mind, great. But if you want to uh -huh. draw a quick thumbnail, just uh -huh. something that you think a real fast one, like a 30 second drawing and then go, okay. yeah, kind of like that layout. Then move right into your painting itself. Okay. Drawing. Thank you. That was a great question. You know. I mean, I kind of um, imagine like, what if you were on a deserted island and this just happens to be these barrels that are there? What happened to those barrels? Let's put a hole in the barrel. That's kind of, let's make one broken. Okay. It's kind of fun, you know? But would there be a lamp there? Probably not. That's okay. Some of these lights are just fantastic. They just have so much character. Tell a story. Oh. And lastly, um, in your printouts, I, I included some grasses and stuff. If you want to include those just for reference, you can kind of throw those behind everything, which would be great. Or wherever you want to do it. Or don't include it if you're on a deserted island or something. The world is your oyster. When I took figure drawing in school, my drawing instructor, I spent more time when I first started as a freshman, I spent more time looking at the paper than I did the subjects. And she would literally come over, put her hand on my head and turn it and lift it and go, look at the subject, <laughs> you know? And I'd be like, okay. <laughs> so you, you, you gotta constantly study what you're looking at. <clears throat> Ten minutes, and then it'll be five minutes to nine, and then we can share.
sometimes what I like to do is just draw boxes on my, just to kind of get an idea for a, a cool layout. I'll just draw dark boxes. I think, does that work, you know? And there's different uh, principles of design that you can, you know, you can apply. You know, repetition is one thing, proportions, another movement is always good, you know, uh, especially with, with, with trees and stuff, you know, or you can put a path in there. That's movement. There's, there's people. You can add people to your scene. By all means, I didn't even think about that. So let's add some in here. And here's a person that fast. <laughs> I got a person. You know what? This person doesn't want to be alone. Let's draw another person. So here's another person with a little head, a tall body. They're walking. They're holding hands. They're happy. Look at that. You know? And you know what? They want to be a family. So let's include another little person in there. And that little person wants to be alone. So they have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> there we go now see it's already got personality i'm telling a story here you know it's great but i can't really see the people so let's add some color to what they're wearing isn't this fun i just love this <laughs> just a splash of color it doesn't have to be we're not making a suit here you know we're not we're not trying to make this thing uh, Finish painting. It's got a little teal on, a little jaguar. Thing. So now I know this painting's in Northeast Florida. You know, Chris, one time you gave some great advice, um, which I apply now. It is when you go sketching, especially when you're by yourself, everyone will stop. And oh, you like, are you an artist? Do you like to sketch? What are you doing? Are you an artist? You know, and then you're just, and then usually I just, I go, yeah, I just like to sketch. What I found, which Chris said, which was great, is position yourself where there's a wall behind. <laughs> and, ah. uh, yeah, they always need that protection. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was sage advice. I loved it. <laughs> so. But I have yet to experience in, in years of painting anyone who's been so cool to say that terrible. <laughs> you know, so that's good. <laughs> There's hope for humanity after all. And these are pretty quick sketches. I mean, 10 minute sketches is, is asking a lot, 10, 15 minute sketches. I mean, I know asking a lot, but really the point of this exercise is to kind of understand composition, flow, and thumbnails. We talked about that, like laying things out and to how to look at scenes differently. So when you go to draw, you look for an interesting scene. You, you know, you can use your, uh, that kind of thing where you're, where you're kind of doing that, you know, and seeing what would be interesting instead of, and, and it can be intimidating when you, um, when you go to draw and you have this big city in front of you and you're like, I don't even know where to start. And you end up half of your, half of your, uh, half of your scene goes off the page, you know, and you're like, what happened? I don't, I don't really understand. You know, so if you take a few moments to just kind of spy your scene and think in terms of, what would make an interesting drawing here, you know? And what would I enjoy drawing? That's the other thing too. You know, a lot of times it's to get kind of freaked out when someone would ask me to draw something for them and it never turned out as nice as it did as if I did it for myself, you know? And so I realized that, and I don't know if it was I was putting undue pressure on myself or something like that. So what I do is I draw for myself. You know, I go, yeah, you're ready to draw something. That's cool, but I'm, 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 I'm doing this to please myself. <laughs> you know, make myself happy drawing. It. And then if they, you know, and if I like it, if they don't like it, I'm like, what are you kidding? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, let's see what time it is. All right, so it's eight fifty. How about? I think we're gonna need. 
I think five minutes is probably enough time uh, left, and then we can review for five, and then kind of call it off after then. Unless you think there's time. To, if anyone has any thoughts or questions or anything, you know, that, that's fine. Um, the other thing is, I love talking about art and drawing and sketching. So if you see me when we're out and about, certainly uh, if you want to talk about things like I love sharing ideas. I love learning new things. You know, I love it when, you know, I ask questions constantly. I, I probably plague some of y'all to death when I we go out there. Like, How did you do that? That's awesome. <laughs> you know, and so by all means, you know, uh, always you can email me. I'm on Instagram um, mostly. I, I have a website, but I, I, that just kind of sits out there. But really, Instagram would be the uh, which is uh, Scott Merrill Art. I think is what it is. And um, you can reach me through there. And, you know, I, I do love talking about art. Hey, Scott. Yes, sir. How's, uh, how's technology affecting your, uh, your, your talent, your ability to hand, hand sketch? Oh, Is, that are you maintaining mm -hmm. that, that brain to hand natural connection and not letting a keyboard dictate that to you. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I won't go into AI, but that has already, the tentacles of AI have already infused into where I'm at. And, you know, I'm trying to think of it in a positive way. Um, and there are some positive ways to AI. There certainly are. And then there's other things I think it's 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 not that great, especially in the art area. I think it's, it's art on artists, I think. But... As far as um, how does that affect my my natural drawing skills, um, I honestly pretty much almost always sketch at work, regardless of whatever I'm working on. Because when I go to do something on the computer, uh, it, I do have a, a monitor that I can draw on. I don't know if you can see it back there or not, but it has a stylus, and I can actually draw on there. And it, and I can do some really fun pieces that are really effective. There's a painting on the wall behind me. I'll show you before we're done. Actually, I can take it off now. And um, this was digitally done, you know, with a stylus. I don't know if you can see it or not. And um, and it's great. It's pretty. It was fun to do. I really enjoyed it. I got paid. Um, it was a finance project. But honestly, for me personally, it's like a big disconnect. Yeah. Um, I don't like the way the style, I feel like I'm drawing on an ice cube, you know, there's just, it's, it's not pleasant. And part of your senses, part of the experience of drawing and creating, in my opinion, is dealing with natural fiber, dealing with wet stuff, dealing, you know, it's, it's what makes us human. And the computer sets a lot of the, you know, to me, it's more of a hard application than it is a fine application. Yep. And I try to, to not even promote my digital art that much. Um, it's great. There's nothing wrong with it. So you, and it, it's really positive. Tons of money on it. But personally, I still do it. You know, I, I do enjoy doing it, but I really enjoy the human connection to paper. Um, I mentioned AI. There's certainly nothing wrong with that at all. It solves a lot of problems. It will make things easier for a lot of people. I do think it'll have an impact on millions of people, um, especially artists of all careers. And, and, uh, but, you know, I think just like the camera, you know, people said, oh, Photoshop came out. People are, um, you know, no one's going to do photography. People still do photography, <laughs> you know. So you'll still do it. There's just some joy in creating, you know. And, um, uh, you know, I, I share with a, a personal friend of mine, we, we talk back and forth a lot about AI. And, uh, relinquish the ability for me to create something in my mind to relinquish that to a program to do it quite yet but i can see where it would help you for generating ideas and brainstorming and stuff like that so it, it it's definitely got some really positive sides and it's got some non as far as how does that affect me personally as an artist um say 54 um personally as an artist uh i never give up on traditional art i I love it. And I include it with everything I do. So if I'm doing stuff digitally, I'm like, I apply what I learn, what we do here, I apply digitally, you know, on, on the digital realm. But, you know, I, I, I still practice sketching, 
daily. I mean, even on the meetings today, for instance, oh yeah, I had a meeting today and people were taking notes and while they're taking notes, I'm like drawing, you know, I'm thinking about our project, you know, <laughs> and, and, uh, Here's the actual note page from a meeting, yeah. you know. Um, <laughs> they, they, they're drawing on the whiteboard words. This was for a project that we're all contemplating doing. And, um, you know, and I'm like, well, let me think, you know, how does how's traffic going to flow? You know, let me draw some arrows. You know, where's that going? You know, there's a police station. I'll let me draw a little police car. So, you know, uh, so it's it's pretty fun. So I think we've come to a stopping point. Uh, and if everybody would like to share, that would be okay. awesome. All right, I'll just start at the top of the Brady Bunch screen and work my way down and see who's first. There uh, we go. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I do love it. Let me see, I'm gonna close this part of my screen. Hang on one second so I can get a full view. Hang on one second. Where is that? Right here. Full screen. Hopefully. Ah, there we go. Wow, that looks great. I love your composition. Hey, that look, is Wes, cool. look at Wes showing up. Look at Wes repping <laughs> out there, man. Sorry. Oh, I'm, yes. I'm late to the party. <laughs> hey, but, you know, I have I have to say that uh, this weekend, some of you know that uh, we had a, a sketch seminar in yeah. Chicago. And I spent all weekend um, scribbling very quickly, um, at least the 14 different workshops. I wanted to show you one of the uh, sketches that I did. Some of you may recognize this character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, that was the kind of sketching I was doing. I, 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 I limited because I had uh, so many to cover. I was trying to capture. Uh, three in the morning, three in the night, uh, in the afternoon for the two days that we had the workshops. So it was, uh, uh, I'm surprised I'm here sketching at all because my my arm was about ready to fall <laughs> off and, and I did a lot of walking. So um, one of the, uh, Scott, I wanted to tell you that one of the uh, instructors uh, who's an architect was talking specifically about uh, thumbnails and how um, um, not enough people spend time planning out um their their layouts they usually just go with that's it and they just go for it you know and okay. sometimes you can you can find a better option if you if you play around with it a little bit so Excellent. absolutely yep absolutely oh chris that's beautiful i love it oh you did too really nice oh, oh, that's I great yeah just nice mm -hmm. I love how the barrels are kind of tucked behind those trees in the background. It's like there's something going back on back there. And there's your preliminary. It's like, a, I guess, like a value study maybe on the left that you did. That That is fantastic. Oh, I just love it. That's nice. All right, Lisa, let's see yours. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, nice yeah. composition. Yeah. You used one of the elements of, uh, you know, uh, the design where you've got repetition with the lamps that's cool on both left and oh that's nice so you have something going on a lot on the right it's like two thirds and a third that's wonderful <laughs> and you have some preliminary sketches that's great Thank you. all right who else is going to share all right joanna let's see oh that's nice i love the stones that's kind of a nice ad i love oh, that man. nice oh, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, they look like little prairie style lamps kind of coming up out of the ground. That is wonderful. Yeah. Oh, and he did the thumbnail. <laughs> Ooh, I love oh, it. all the colors. Mm -hmm. And I like how you use purple for the shading on the left hand side of the cash shadow for the barrel and for the light. Please, you're consistent with that. That's <laughs> just beautiful. Love it. Who else we got here? Okay, I forgot whose iPad too. I don't see your face. Who's that? Oh, hey, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey there. Oh, oh, <laughs> Jamie. Oh, nice. Oh, of course. I love Jamie. Beautiful. I, this, oh, you know what you did that I love is you broke the tree out of the frame. That's mm. so. It's one of my favorite <laughs> things to do. Like it's called the the breakout, you know, series where things kind of bust out a little bit. 
it's contained on the right and you have a nice oh you have a title a walk nice handwriting too a walk on the beach that's and a great little sketch uh -huh. Uh -huh. Very nice. i love how the path goes off into the distance it's like where are you going you know that's <laughs> one thing anybody else have anything they want to share okay oh that's Glenn, nice yeah <laughs> I love your light in the distance like that too. It's it's scaled appropriately, which is wonderful. And your shadows look great. I love how you did some green, the banding on the on the actual barrels, on the tops. That's wonderful. Yeah, thank you. That is really cool. Anybody else want to share? Louise has got hers up too. Dave, nice. All right. Hey, nice sunset. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Lisa? Mm -hmm. Oh, Louisa, there we oh. go. Oh. Very nice. Oh. Very nice. Oh. I did two thumbnails, but they are. I got lost in my papers right now. I don't know where they are. <laughs> yeah, did you, did you, did that's beautiful. I, I love how you get the lights hanging. That. That's so pirates the yeah. That's so cool. Did, did did everybody find doing thumbnails assisted them in any way? Like, oh, yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, great. Well, then that's just something you know, just to do a quick thumbnail sketch when you're, especially when you're out and you're looking at a big scene and you're like, I'm not sure what to do. You can do that, and then you can kind of do a thumbnail, get your values really quick. And go, okay, that's a great start. You've already warmed up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, Can we yeah. take a, a group picture? Oh, yeah. Oh, Anna, did we see yours, Anna? Yeah. yeah we we, we need to see yours. Yeah. Okay, let me. Not like yourself, there, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right. I love it. Like yeah. nice. Very nice. The mm -hmm. thumbnails here. Nice, nice conversation. Okay. Very nice. Love okay. it. Thank you. Yep. So ready for Are we going to all hold them up? Yes, please. Group shot. Group shot. Yes. Yeah. You can hold your sketch. Everyone is ready. Let me put the camera. One, two, and three. Thank you. Thank well, you. I really appreciate y'all allowing me and inviting me to participate. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I love art. I love sketching. It's, I love this group. Let me tell you, <laughs> I used to sketch by myself for years, and I didn't know there was a whole group of people who did it. And then once I joined the group, I was like, wow, I love this group. I have so much in common. And, you know, it's it's just wonderful. <laughs> well, I'm happy that you joined us. Yeah. yeah. Yes, thank Scott, you. thank you. It's a great, great job. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Y'all have a great night and a great week. <laughs> Scott, thank you. Great Good job. Night, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Scott. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye.